The relationship between New Zealand and the Boeing company goes back to the earliest days of aviation. When in 1917, a New Zealand company purchased the first and second Boeing aircraft, built by William Boeing himself. These historic B and W utility seaplanes were put to work by the Walsh brothers of Auckland, Vivian and brother Leo, whose New Zealand flying school trained World War I fighter pilots. Fifty years later, Kiwis and the Boeing Company were doing business again. And it was their brand new jetliner, the Model 737, we would be buying. Commercial aviation in New Zealand came of age in the 30s, when a handful of airlines operated scheduled and charter services using a variety of aircraft. De Havilland Dragons, Rapides and Dominies were popular. Our, uh questions about the airplane was how it would handle the uh, strong gusty northerly conditions in Wellington. I recall that uh, Helen Kenning and I were flying the airplane one day into Wellington. The wind was gusting 50 to 60 knots. We realized we had an excellent opportunity to try the thing out. And uh, sitting in the jump seat between and behind the two pilots was John Davy, the lead instructor from Boeing who was out here. They sent several instructors out to sort of monitor our introduction to the aircraft. John was not inclined to say, stay silent for long periods and uh, always had something to say. And on the approach to Wellington, I noticed I hadn't heard from John for some time. I turned and looked around. On the back of Alan Kenning's seat were four white knuckles and I had no reason to believe that there weren't, uh, wasn't a similar set on the back of my seat. And he didn't have anything to say until after we'd landed. And uh, he said, well, that was interesting, wasn't it? This high lift, high drag configuration would give the 737 impressive takeoff and landing performance. Like the 727, with throttles closed, there would be little tendency to float during landing. And wing spoilers and thrust reverses would provide maximum traction and rapid deceleration during the landing roll. In the cruise, it would be a Mach 0.7 machine with a top speed of over 500 miles per hour. The aircraft was first mooted in November 1964 and ordered into production in early 1965 as the 737 Series 100. The 100 Series model was short-lived with only 30 examples built. 22 going to the launch customer Lufthansa of Germany. Some of which would operate in New Zealand over 20 years later. The aircraft first flew on April the 9th, 1967. But even before that event, Boeing had announced a stretch of the basic design, calling it the Series 200. United Airlines was the launch customer for the new design, ordering a total of 40 aircraft. The 737-200 featured a six-foot stretch of the fuselage, Pratt & Whitney JT-8D-7 engines and an increase in gross weight up to 107,000 pounds. It was the 737-200 that interested New Zealand's National Airways Corporation most. You might be surprised by what we've got in our catalogue on our streaming platform at www.historicalmachines.tv. We've got the full version of this documentary, which you're sure to enjoy, and there's a whole lot more as well. So jump over there. Grab yourself a free seven-day trial, check out what's in the catalogue and watch the full version of this movie while you're there.